The global car market is resetting and we have even more evidence. Carlos Tavares, the former chief executive officer at Stellantis, has abruptly stepped down the same weekend at the CFO at Nissan resigned as well. And we have strikes going on over in Germany for Volkswagen that the auto industry, legacy auto especially, is resetting big time right now. Let's break down each of these stories and what it means for end of year car deals. Let's start with Stellantis, Dad. What the heck happened? Well, uh, Carlos Tavares was uh, asked nicely to submit his resignation. And being the good ex-CEO that he is, he graciously did that. And, uh, you know, we don't know what his golden parachute is, um, but I'm sure he will get paid handsomely for leaving his position early. Uh, they started uh, searching for his replacement back in the middle of uh, October, I think it was, with the intentions of allowing him to finish out his contract that ran through the middle of 2026. Um, and what what they realized was that six weeks was more than enough, and they asked him to leave. Um, so that doesn't bode well for Stellantis. Let's, let's talk about how Stellantis got into that situation, Dad. Their dealers are pissed off and their customers are pissed off. Dealers are pissed because their cars aren't selling. Customers are pissed because the prices have gone up significantly. We did a study back on CarEdge.com. Jeep, one of the brands that Carlos Taveros uh, managed at Stellantis. Stellantis is Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram primarily. Jeep increased their MSRPs 61% over the last five years. No other auto maker even came close to that. So Jeep and all the Stellantis brands raised their prices significantly. That pissed off customers. Now those expensive vehicles that dealers have to floor plan, they finance. The dealers are losing money because they're sitting there. That's kind of like the strategic shift that happened at Stellantis over the past, I don't know, three to five years and why they're in such a bad situation now and why obviously the CEO is abruptly leaving the company. Well, you know, they his theory was that we're going to strike while the iron's hot. The chip shortage allowed them to move more up market. There were fewer buyers, uh, but the buyers that were out there were, were willing to pay just about anything for any of the product. And so they went upscale and they were making double digit profit margins on these things. Well, Fast forward to today, or actually you could fast forward to 18 months ago, and things started to slow down. Production started to build back up. Inventory levels built back up. Uh, all of a sudden, there was way more supply than there was demand because, well, the prices were way higher than what their customer base wanted. And, well, as they said in the movie Airplane, the poop hit the fan and this is where we're at today. He, he was asked to leave because it was just a huge misstep on his part and the other uh, C-level, C-suite executives at uh, Stellantis. They, they, they missed big time. So Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram can't sell anything, and now their CEO is ousted. Let's move to Nissan, Dad. Nissan, we've documented here on the Car Edge channel, is struggling mightily, and they re uh, actually realized a 99% decline in operating profit last quarter. Well, Dad, their CFO has decided over this most recent weekend to resign as well. Another indication that Legacy Auto is struggling. And this time, Dad, the case for Nissan to, to suggest that their uh, downfalls because they increase prices significantly, it's a harder case to make. Nissans can be, you know, acquired for under twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Good luck finding a sub $30,000 Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, or Dodge product. So what's going on at Nissan that led to a 99% decline in profits and their CFO stepping down? And this is also their CEO said he's going to take a massive pay cut until the company gets back on better footing. So Nissan kind of searching for a lifeline right now. What the heck happened there? Um, they haven't come out with any hot products, <laughs> you know, um, the car business is is really kind of funny in the sense that if you build things that people find exciting, even if it's crap, people will buy it. If you build things that not only are crap, but people don't find exciting, people don't buy it. And that's what kind of happened to Nissan. They haven't had a major hit in any of their product development recently, and that's finally caught up to them. Um, so yeah, they're struggling mightily. There is a case to be made, according to a Forbes article I read, that they might only have 12 to 14 months 
uh, lifeline left financially. They, they could be looking for a suitor to uh, buy a portion of the company or, or take over the company. Uh, one of the rumors is that Honda might be uh, on the verge of trying to bail them out and save them. I don't know that that's the case, but if if you if you don't build things that are visually striking that people go, oh, I got to have it, even if it's not a particularly good vehicle, um, then you're not going to sell cars. And Nissan, just they don't have any winners at the moment. Yeah, and they also, Dad, tried to go in the direction of electric vehicles, and their Aria is their most expensive outside the Pathfinder that gets up there and the Titan that gets up there. But the Aria is very expensive and not selling as well. So that was another undercurrent for both Stellantis and here for Nissan is a bit of a push towards electric vehicles that hasn't played out. Now, another automaker that's struggling right now that really went deep all in on EVs, Volkswagen. And we see Volkswagen, Dad, the headline from this weekend, nine different plants over in Europe where you have strikes going on right now in anticipation of cutting down production as well as uh, you know significant multi-billion euro or uh, dollar uh, savings from these big conglomerates or from the big conglomerate over in Germany. Volkswagen, they're also struggling. And it's worth mentioning last week, two weeks ago, Mercedes-Benz was in the news because they're struggling too. So another example here of a legacy automaker that's not in firm footing. Uh, it's just, we, we didn't realize it or... I didn't realize it. I shouldn't say we. I didn't realize that that um, all these legacy manufacturers were on such soft footing. Um, but as it turns out, um, we have seen warning signs over the, probably the last 12 months that things weren't necessarily as good as everybody had hoped. And uh, the chickens are coming home to roost, so to speak. They're, you know, uh, profit margins are down. Uh, production levels need to drop. EV sales have slowed even in Europe, so that many of these companies are struggling and looking at doing some things that they've never done. For instance, VW is looking at closing some some factories uh, across Europe. They've never done that before. Uh, they're looking at laying off uh, employees that they haven't really had to look at before. And it's very difficult with unionized labor in Europe because there's certain guarantees built into their contracts. Many of these manufacturers are on unstable footing at the moment. And it, it, it begs the question as to what is the landscape going to look like moving forward when we look at legacy automobile manufacturers? Who will survive? Who won't survive? Who will be consolidated? And who will just disappear altogether? I do think there's also a short-term story, Dad, which is December is the best month to buy a new car. And this is a buyer's market through and through. All these negative headlines two years ago, they were positive headlines for yes. the industry. Chip shortage yields record profits for automakers and dealers. We are not seeing headlines like that right now. So use this as negotiating leverage when you go into your local dealership for any of the brands that we've mentioned in today's video. And heck, please use our website. It's free to see, you know, which brands have more inventory, which brands have less, your local market conditions. Go leverage that information because right now is a buyer's market through and through. Will Nissan exist in 24 months? I don't know. Will there be consolidation? I think so, but still, crystal ball's fuzzy. I do know one thing that's damn for sure, Dad, and that is... End of the year, best time to buy a new car. Buyer's market, clear cut. It's that today. Go take advantage of it. Uh, sounds like a plan to me. Maybe I need to get out there.